Hello everyone, it's Julie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to paint this up so I can hurry up and get this last mixed media page done and then all of them will be set aside so I can work on the other structures of the journal. Oh, I know it seems like it's taking a long time, but I just wanted to make sure this is the most time consuming part I think out of the whole project is getting this painting aspect down and set aside. Um, and then the other stuff is should move quite a bit, quite, you know, quite along. And so here we go. I brought her out. This is Eliza and I thought I might when I'm done with this definitely now place her here probably in the center or something like that because um, if you've watched my last video um, when I laid the texture paste down I think I believe I did mention that you know the reason behind laying this particular design down especially with the flowers because she started out as a flower girl and um, so this will go on and and other elements so I'm keeping her up here out of the way uh, for inspiration and I was sitting here for a minute and just studying the color scheme and I'm going to pretty much use the same colors because they're metallicized. But the flowers, I think I'm going to go ahead and use more of this. Bring out more of the pink in it. Um, hopefully that will, you'll see that more above the, I mean it's going to look metallicized, metal-like. But I want a lot of, more of the pink however subtle it's not going to be like a bold color of flowers but it will be subtle enough that it does have that pop and it does stand out that's how I'm going I think that's how we'll, um, it'll get there hopefully my goals will be accomplished it'll be transferred onto this palette here and then I put down the English ivory green here on my color palette because I definitely am going to be laying this down on the leaves the stems and the leaves here and like the flowers the stems and the leaves are gonna have that subtle definition too while well, everything around it's going to be you know heavily metallicized Okay, so let's get started and I gotta mix this color first because this is the color of my um, oxidation and erosion. Um, yeah, so right here when I was telling you how I was spreading all of these out, like right up and through this area here, when it's how I just took the spatula and then just spread it out, that's the area what I was trying to describe in the other videos is that this is going to look like it's there's erosion now this is oxidation but then this gives it that the texture of erosion I hope that makes sense okay I'm going to get started um, yeah I I'm just, I don't know if I should continue with this video. I just kind of feel a bit weepy and, um, who, let me just catch my breath. Hang on. I'm going to pause the video. Hold on. Okay. I'm back. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this color. So I use the green the blue then it's actually true navy 
and this is the apple barrel paints that I'm using and I don't know if apple barrel is still there um, it's because I've purchased these a couple of years ago but miraculously they've survived um, they're still in great shape so I'm going to go ahead and apply this glue okay true blue by apple barrel some English ivory and my antique parchment oh wrong one pulled out the wrong one this is antique parchment antique white is just too white it just makes it takes it down to like uh, I don't know what you would call them uh, baby colors powder colors uh, I think I may have put too much of that on there oh we get all it right because I've got my on my fingers so. okay breathing 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 okay uh, I may not come out too hold on just a second I'll be right back again so sorry okay resuming Let me go ahead and mix. I'm gonna get these out of the way. Set that over there. Let's mix this up here. So, how's everybody doing today? I hope uh, really well. Staying well. Keeping busy. I think I need to add a little more blue to this. Yeah. Uh, just a little, maybe. Huh, let's see. Yep, I think it's going to need a little more blue. But I think I've added a bit too much paint. Then again, I'm just going to mop it up on some cogs and gears and stuff. I gotta work fast though because this paint will dry under my fan. Actually, I'm gonna turn my fan off. Ouch. Oh, wow. Okay. Alright, fan's off so my paint won't dry as quickly underneath this fan. I'm just reading a quick text message. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add a little more true blue. Oh, I made a mess of that, didn't I? Okay. Yes, I have some things coming up that are a bit oh my goodness why am I not like, they're a bit stressful um, kind of debilitated me with worry today and so that doesn't help the fact that uh, you know when you when you know because I'm new at building my my channel I look and see you know that I'm getting the views but no one is liking giving me a like so I'm thinking that while they're viewing it they may not watch the whole thing and that's why I'm not getting the like likes on here let's see if that, that's good right there see how that matches pretty good I think yep okay so I'm ready to paint 
So, well, you know, I shouldn't be too upset that that is happening. It's natural, I guess, for, I don't know if it's, if it's normal when somebody's on for the first time. I'm wiping this off because with this brush, it's just loaded with too much of the paint. I don't want to start off with very little and spreading this around. I think I made too much. Even after I mopped that onto the cobs. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm hoping that my spirit and its condition that it's in now doesn't transfer onto this project. I hope that it comes out. I hope that it comes out really good. We'll see, right? Just add a little water so I could just stretch it out and and that's why, you know, didn't want to make so much of this color because just adding a dab of water just helps stretch it out, you know? Just going for it and laying it down. I think I'm confident enough now that, you know, because I'm back to painting that you know your level of confidence just picks up right see just adding just dipping the just the little tip of a of water onto the brush just helps smooth I want to get it into I'm smoothing it out with water because I want it in between the cracks because you know like I was sharing with you on the other videos that as you keep adding the layers things will start popping out and things will start becoming more defined and I definitely want some of this erosion on this project well I know that a lot of it's going to be covered but subtly because there's a lot of um, texture going on on this page. I've done a lot of stenciling. Gonna continue on doing my videos and I guess for any of those that do truly like my videos will give me a like I just this is my happy place so if I'm I'm getting used to the fact that I'm talking to myself uh, I know that it's actually talking with you guys out there but I am getting used to just talking and jabbering away So in the next weeks, I don't know how active I'm going to be on this channel or making my videos. I, however, I am determined this time to not let those types of distractions um, take me away from what I have been waiting to build up for so long. It just so many life circumstances and things just got in the way you know just put my crafting and stuff I wanted to do this quite some time ago but it just put it all on the back burner because of those huge 
undertaking, so I'm sorry if I sound like a Debbie Downer. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to make you guys feel down. If you guys want to stay and watch, go ahead and watch. If not, you can just click out of my video. Uh, and I know that just didn't sound good, very good either, but As long as I like my videos, right? Yeah. I'm just trying to be here giving you guys some inspiration. Like I've received so much inspiration from other crafters. <sighs> okay, so. I know that's a lot more coverage than I did on the last one, but because there's so much going on, there's a lot of stenciling texture and I need to make sure that it's, that it's, I got a good coverage and that make sure that this element, this feature, seeing I've used so much here, so I'm just going to. Oh, what do I do with that? I'm gonna. Where is that piece of paper? Oh, found it. Okay. I'm gonna set this up here to do some drawing. Uh, lay out some of these cogs. Oops. I think I'm gonna go and set it over here. Get these gears. I just figured that there's going to be someone that's new that stumbles up on my channel and just enjoys the just the fascination of of just doing this you know it's just it's fascinating that's how I got hooked to hooked on getting involved with junk journaling so I thought wow that's a whole other art world, right? Head for okay, here they are. Okay. And I've got these little keys. These are so cute. I don't know if you could see them. That's going to get a little patina going on that too because it's going on the journal actually going to be glued down on the page okay so I'm gonna mop this up I thought I was gonna go ahead and pause this because I'm sure a lot of you who've watched my videos have seen what I've done and okay and wouldn't want to see this part again but um I was just saying there's someone there that might be tuning in right now that's saying, oh my goodness, that is a cool feature. Never thought to do that. Just by using your acrylic paints so you don't need to go out there. If you can't afford alcohol inks and things like that, acrylic paint will do the trick. And because when I started out, I couldn't afford a lot of the stuff that I do have now. And that's just because of me selling my journals. You know, although, I mean, I mean, I could afford it because my husband does very well. But, you know, that's something I'm not going to take advantage of. We're not getting any younger. And... Uh... We're having to, while everything is paid off and all that, we're looking for retirement because I'm not working anymore. I can't because of my disability. I'm just painting up these silver ones because I don't know where that's going to go. I just wanted to bring some of the silver one out, these little type buttons, and see how that ends up. 
Okay, so I'm gonna set these gears. So I'm gonna show you, I'll bring it up. Okay, see those? That little rose um, button, there were buttons and I what I did was on the underside of it, I cut off the little button things and these are, you know, plastic. I was gonna go ahead and buy those Finna bars and all those things which are quite expensive to buy on in Amazon or anywhere Etsy but these are so much better for me I think because once I create them to look like metal really good metal elements it's lighter in weight so that way it doesn't weigh down your journal because the the steampunk that I'm making it, it would have required a lot of those metal elements and whoever buys this journal it's going to weigh a lot which will increase the shipping cost because it goes by weight right so naturally that even excuse me this is going to end up absolutely beautiful i think well you've seen the other cogs and gears well but these silver ones i don't know how that's going to end up do you see that we'll see the silver might even then completely disappear right after all it's said and done. Oh, I'm sorry if I just sound so cranky and crabby or I'm just thinking how the next days coming are are going to come out. It's I think this is I'm gonna go ahead and pause this and dry it up and I'll be right back. Okay, I finished drawing this for the most part and I just want to share for those that it might be new This is the Sizzix heat gun and it's This one I found typically to be best when you're embossing, but I don't have um, Another like hair dryer. I could use a regular hair dryer, but it just blasts out air Um it still might work, but uh, Tim Holtz came out and has another um, dryer, which is typically for just drying paint and and um, other, you know, substrates. I don't know what he calls it. I guess that's what they're called. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me just... <sighs> So he has another dryer. Um, it's a small one. It does look resemble like a hair dryer, and he uses that to heat because it just emanates enough heat to dry it, but not blasting heat that will burn the paint or burn texture. And it's I don't have it. So what I do is when I use this, I just kind of hold it at a distance. I'm not doing this because it actually can affect the texture paint. So I just hold it at a distance and get that air going. So, but this right here is an inexpensive item. Um, for me, it's inexpensive at like $19.99. It's $20 Hobby Lobby. And if you catch the sales at 50 and 75% off, it's awesome. So you keep an eye on that when they're, you know, having their sales because you can get this for like under ten dollars you know um but i ha bought this one because i do a lot of embossing uh, but now because i'm getting into mixed media i don't have the other but i'm not worrying about it i'm not going to be purchasing it i'm just going to stick to this one but i just want to let you know that um if you start getting into crafting and you're looking at the embossing powders and you know because if you start out using embossing powders just to use on your cards if you're a card maker embossing powders are just awesome because it just gives it that awesome touch to your card so this is the tool that you want to use and um the next thing I wanted to say is I'm going to start applying the metallic black here 
and I am going to use ooh, that needs to go in here I am going to use my smaller brush if you can see this first layer that I laid down the honeycomb is not as raised as the other texture pay, textures and that was intentional but if I start just going over this in black it may not it may clump up in between this and I don't want any clumping of the paint because if that happens I won't have this this feature will not show up so if you've been using texture um, paints and things uh, textures mediums and you're doing the same thing just make sure that you when you take your acrylic paint just water it down so it just runs off in between that way you're not losing you're not losing your stenciling if that makes sense I just want to throw that in there um, just make sure that on those lower rise lower rises don't clump up your paint and if you do just dip your brush into the into your water and then just water it down and let it run and then take napkin and just sponge on top to remove if all the, any excess that you have okay so I need to clear this up I just hate wasting this oh hold up hold your horses I'm gonna pause and I'll be right back Jacqueline gave me an awesome idea because I don't want to waste this I'll be right back okay I was looking for this this is my little palette thing that I was using to um, test test things out so I think what I'm gonna do is just take my get just a little bit of water teeny bit and loosen this paint up so I'm just gonna mop it up and put it apply it on here just apply some paint a little water to make this visible It on over here I'm just gonna keep mopping my excess paint Jacqueline Langman thank you Jacqueline for this wonderful idea I'm pretty sure I've heard it before um, I know that uh, Andrea mops up her stuff puts it down just wets it and then just dips her paper onto it mopping it all up who knows how what this is going to come out looking like right for tags and stuff right mm -hmm. come to the edge oh goodness should be a little more prepared Ugh. this paper is buckling up though Paint this can end up being used for tags in this project. All right, Jacqueline. Oh my. Just get in the way. I'm being a little clumsy. That's what happens to me when I'm not feeling good about anything or just, you know, having some anxiety. I get clumsy. And that's why I'm hoping that this project. This page doesn't reflect it because I certainly want this page to come out really good. So we don't want to waste not, right? Want not, waste not, want not. Here we go. Let's paint this up. Come on, get. Uh. I'm not ruining my color board. Oh, got my fingerprints on there. All right, I'm gonna set this aside somewhere over here to dry. 
Ugh. Oh, yeah. Started to seep through on my, my color board here. My reference board. Oh, goodness, okay. Bring that back and wipe my hands. Okay, I did pause because I had paint all over my hands and um, I went ahead and laid down the this it's this one's folk art would help to put my glasses on right mm-hmm metallic sequin black that's what this is called metallic sequin black from by folk art. folk art okay so with this black I am going to take some water on the little brush here and water this out because I want this to pretty much run down the grooves See how this, even though it's covering the flowers and stuff, this, I want the black to run down in between the, because I don't want to clog up, I don't want it clogging up, especially in this lower rised area. So I'm just going to go ahead and it to I'm going to start off with this black here in areas that are low in rise see how that's running off can you see that I'm trying to angle it Go ahead and start spreading this color around. Let's see if you can see that. See? So the honeycomb shows up. Just laying this down, letting this run off. See how that paint's just running down? Just bleeding down the page. Okay, and then I'm just gonna spread it out like a watercolor. See, and then you'll be able to see some of the, you will see the flower lettering. some more of the honeycomb. Let's spread that out. Let's see. And in between the the leaves here. Let's 
We want the color, not the bulk of the color. Excuse me. some of the puddle off, okay? See? Okay. I'm daubing away that puddle so it doesn't take long to dry. I don't have my fan going on because I was saying it's going to dry out this acrylic paint really quick and uh, we don't want that to happen. in that one section. See? Just daub away with if you think it's a little too excessive in one area, just wipe it away. So it's like, well, we know we like watercolors, right? But pretty much this acts like a watercolor, doesn't it? And so if text, uh, acrylic paints is all you have, go for it. Apply some water and it'll move around like watercolors. Get a lot of this black in this where the linings are of the leaves so that it ends up popping out later. But be very careful not to lose the patina of the blue because we're going to be doing more layering but like with the letters you definitely see how I'm thinning out this so that way you don't lose all of you need to keep some of this turquoise okay let's see Yep, it just looks like a big blobby mess, but you know, in the end, it comes out really good, right?
part. See how that looks head on. Part of the reason why I was kind of weepy too is I was going through my photographs today and one came up of my second to the youngest brother who rests in peace. He's not no longer with us. He's with Jesus and mom and dad and brother Ed and So I have a culmination of things while I'm in a sort of a Debbie Downer, but hopefully uh, I'm trying to pick this up, pick the pace up, but let's see, assuming it might help looking at it. Yeah, it's some deep, dark areas, shadow, shadow, shadows of where the leaves are, if you could see, like right over here, up close, I'd probably want to go in a little bit more, deeper right there where I just painted that, and then over here, adding a little more, just giving it a little more definition with the black, so I think we're nearly done. Oh. I see a missed area right here. So I'm just giving it a quick over view. Let me get some of this. I'm going to mop this up and put some over in here in this corner. There we go. Dab that off. So I'm going around in areas that I'm thinking that to line these leaves up because once they're, once I've got that down along the sides here, it's going to pick up, it's going to stand out. We want that. Let's see. How are we looking? How are we looking? I think we're looking good there. Okay, I think I like what I see. Hold on, maybe. Those lower rises. I want to deepen that black. Get a tiny, teeny, eensy, weensy more. One drop. Okay, this is where I'm going to go in and apply some more definition like right in through here. If you're watching this, you can see that. I just stroked it underneath that and then I'm going to stroke it in between the honeycomb features. See how it brought that out? Right there. Mm 
you see that guys so it's just a matter of fun and play so if you've separating the flower petals Do I think everyone can do this? Yes. I couldn't do it without practice. Much practice. Watching and learning and doing. So if you are considering doing this, give it a go because the way you translate your art down on paper ends up becoming really beautiful, very precious, I mean. Yeah, if you really want to get into painting, just start doing small little things, sections at a time. Whether it's with crayons, you know, acrylic paint. As you can see, acrylic paint goes a long way. Let's see, I'm taking this paint around my petals so when I start layering the metallics that black is going to give me that definition that I need let's see how is that one doing let's just go in here a little bit I'll just add and then the Honeycomb here. Oops. Where is it at? Okay. I didn't apply water to this brush. I'm just applying it now straight on. Trying to define the honeycomb. So this is the kind of work that you want to do with whatever you're creating using your stencils when you want to give it some more definition you just take your fine brush and just start applying it in areas so that you know once you start laying the other paints whatever you're using it will define black is a great def definer you know And then I will be adding on to this, like I was saying, the, say I want these cogs, want a little more black in here for these gears. See how it's picking up. So it's picking up that gear, just taking it and just sweeping some motions stroking some of the so let me give you an example let's take this V up in this area right here right there that V and I think I know I'm gonna stroke the thing and just gonna stroke the brush outward did you see how that V is more defined I think the reason why now let's take this U right here I'm going to stroke it along the inside of the, against the, the rise of the letter, and then I'm going to stroke it out. See how, it, there, well, maybe not. My lighting is poor because I didn't turn on my other light, the one that my husband rigged for me. That's why I'm having a hard time looking at this too. Oh, and that's probably why people don't like my videos because I don't catch those little things. I don't know. Oh.
So I'm bringing this gear to life. Okay, well I'm at 51 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off and do the rest off camera. That way this video can start loading. And then I'll continue on with the next color. Thank you for stopping by. Let's zoom this in one more time. Let's see how well you can see this here. So we can see the honeycomb feature. I'm probably going to use a little more black in here so the honeycomb is a little more defined like this here. Go around the leaves and the stems of the flower to make sure that and probably down in here some more. Okay, well thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Oh, and peace and happy crafting. Bye.